Hey guys, uh, just an update on my small scale bowling lane. I know a lot of you have been asking about it and um, kind of wondering uh, what the progress has been over the last week, week and a half, and I apologize for keeping you guys in the dark. Um, made a lot of progress actually, but uh, very little of it is actually something you can see. A lot of it has been in the way of programming and things like that, but I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of what I've been up to and, and where I'm headed and, and things like that, some, some kind of design uh, concerns and things like that. But um, first off, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Rep2369, uh, Chris, and Chad from Basement Bowling. I'd really uh, like to thank all those guys for the videos and, and everything and the, and the feedback that they've given and, and everybody for the feedback that you've given and the material that you provided and, and things like that. Um, there's a couple things that I'm taking in consideration from uh, definitely some of those guys. Um, because they have, a, a, Chris in particular has a very elegant way of doing things and has been kind enough to share some of that with me and in turn with you since it's going to be open source. But uh, um, definitely like to, to, to thank those guys. But um, uh, I appreciate all the comments and feedback that I've gotten from everybody uh, on Boltech YouTube and all the emails that I've gotten about it. I do appreciate the everything and, and even the questions and, and if I haven't gotten back to you please just send me another message and I'll make sure that I do I try to get back uh, to everybody as, as quickly as possible so if there's something that I missed or or I didn't cover something then then please just let me know and I'll, I'll take care of that but uh, without further ado um, let's go see uh, what progress looks like on the small scale bowling lane all right you're staring at my crappy XP machine that is currently the test machine for my scoring system and uh, as well as bowling control system so uh, this will control things uh, such as uh, the pin spotter it will control the score displays it'll be the main interface if you guys want more um, more general information I guess check out the first video that I posted uh, last week but um, uh, let's see Right now, this is just running on uh, just a, a bare bones XP machine with Python 2.7. Um, there's a couple of prereqs, and and I'll be sure to list those out for you guys whenever I uh, release the software. And and I know that a lot of you have, have been asking and, and things like that. Uh, I've just got a couple of kinks to work out, and uh, the scoring system will be released. Um, right now, it does have support for uh, frames per turn, and what that means is is if you're setting pins on your small scale lane and you don't want to swap every single frame uh, to you know back and forth between setting pins and actually bowling we uh, there's an option in the configuration file to have what we call frames per turn so each bowler can bowl three frames or whatever frame uh, number that you set it at and go all the way up to 10 actually so um, and you'll see that here I've got it actually set on frames uh, on three frames per turn so um, Without further ado, actually, let's go ahead and start software. So looking at it, you see a fancy schmancy little open score um, splash screen, and that's kind of what I'm calling it for lack of a better term, and I'm an open source software freak, so um, yeah, I said the guy running Windows, I guess, but um, you can change that splash screen, you can change the, the, the welcome deal, because right now it says Compies Arcade. Uh, you can change that text that is in the configuration file very easy, just a one line text change. Um, all right, so right now this is the main screen that you're greeted with, just the blank score sheet. Um, and, and it is my plan to set it up so it um, can read from a slideshow directory or something, like an attract mode, quote unquote. And uh, you can have, you know, hey, welcome to our center or a high score leaderboard and things like that. And since this is computer controlled, it will automatically keep track of the names of the people and the high scores and things like that. That's a module that is coming in. And uh, I look forward to programming. But um, it may not make it into the initial release. So once again, all of this will be open source. I will put it on GitHub and you guys will have the link and you can modify to your heart's content. So um, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the basic overview. Um, one of the things that I add is deck light control as well as pindication and you're gonna see those two things there um, and, and pindication keep in mind is very basic until I can get some some 3d art done or if somebody has the um, the uh, like the Brunswick or the AMF AccuScore pindication then uh, awesome uh, if you can provide those graphics that'll be great but um, I know copyright issues etc maybe we can mimic those so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and add a bowler or two bowlers 
So whenever you hit space, you'll get the menu options. And the menu options give you all the basic rundowns here. Um, so right now we're going to go to add a bowler. And this is where we can add um, all of our bowlers. And first bowler we'll put is bowl. And the next uh, one, by hitting the down arrow, we are presented it with the black light checkbox. And uh, it does exactly what it says it does. It um, either switches the deck lights to white or black lights, depending on the bowler. Because I bowl with a bunch of um, nitpicky bowlers. Some, some bowlers like black lights, some don't. More recreational bowlers tend to like the black lights, obviously. Um, and um, this can change that all in the same game. It's, it's not an all or nothing type deal. Um, so each bowler can tweak this out to their own, uh, to their own preference. And one of these is, is the black light. So uh, we'll just leave that off for the first person. But the second person, tech, we will enable the black light on. And whenever we click add bowlers, uh, it shows the first one. Uh, the first bowler up, obviously, is bowl. And uh, we will hit S on the keyboard. I haven't installed the infrared trip line yet, but that will be coming, the, the IR beams. But uh, So right now, we will hit S to simulate the, uh, the trip or the scoring beam being tripped. Now keep in mind that there is a, there is a glitch that I'm trying to work out. This may actually bug out here. Yeah, okay. So it did score four pins. Now that's because the camera is, is booting up. Now this, I guarantee you this next one will, will score a zero. Yeah. And keep in mind that, that what we're going to do here is, is whenever a, a webcam boots up, let's, let's just take a minute to, to show this. Whenever a webcam boots up and captures its first image, the thresholding algorithm may not be all it needs to be is because that webcam takes a minute to adjust to the light. There is an auto adjustment on this camera. So um, one thing that I will need to do in the scoring system is pre-initialize that camera before the game is even started. Um, now, since I hit S on the scoreboard, that camera is, is running now. It's capturing all the images. Um, so whenever I hit S, it will, it will score accurately. But that first frame of the first bowler, the first time that you use the score after you start running, that pin count may be off. And that's why um, I'm going to fix the glitch and I'm going to pre-initialize that camera. But I figured I would leave it there and uh, just show you guys um, that there is still a bit of dynamic involved here with uh, different cameras and what rate they adjust to light, etc. So um, that's something that, that we can work out through just a kind of a pre-initialization uh, pre phase. That's a mouthful. So we'll go ahead and hit S and uh, double zero, obviously. Now, the cool thing about the pindication is we can just remove one. I'm just going to remove the, the head pin. It will uh, display, obviously, the, the deck as it stands. So there you go. Displays for about uh, five seconds. And, um, and it, it will display on the first ball. Now, if we get the whole second ball animation deal going, we can easily uh, incorporate those like strike and spare animations and things like that. Um, so if we hit S again, it should score a miss. Right. Okay, now what happened is uh, whenever I did that, okay, uh, it switched to tech because now we are running three frames per turn. Okay, so now um, in a small scale bowling scenario where you don't have an automatic pin setter, you guys would change. Um, and uh, now the pin setter would be bowling. And tech likes the black light. So as you can see, the lane automatically changed over to the black light. Uh, I did not flip any switches or anything like that. Automatically took over. So because uh, the scorer is controlling the uh, pin deck interface, and the pin deck interface is controlling the 120 volt lines that go to each of the separate lighting fixtures. And I'll show you guys that. Um, and uh, what's, what's cool about this is actually if I hit S, we should score uh, the same deal. Right. OK. So it shows the one pin is gone. And actually, if I take another pin off the deck, it shows as a one, obviously. So if I hit S again, voila. And I'm just going to go ahead and score, score out to where it'll change back. Because after frame three, it'll go back to player one because of three uh, frames per turn. All right. So. The, the, the interesting bit to note there is how the camera automatically adjusted its detection. All right, so one thing I want to do here is we'll go into the diagnostic menu here, and uh, that's under manager functions here down at the bottom. And we're going to calibrate score camera. All right, 
And what you see on there, and I'm going to try to zoom into this the best I can. All right. So what you see on there are uh, a couple things, actually. A couple sliders with RGB values, red, green, and blue. And this is how you adjust the sensitivity and the color detection of the camera. As you can see, uh, or as you may notice, that all fluorescent lights are not created equal. Okay? They're not created equal, so they have a different kind of color output, and that can mess with the camera's detection algorithm because it's looking for whites or off-whites, etc. So uh, there could be some variance there. And um, with that said, you need to tweak these RGB values. Now, there are three of these RGB triplets, if you will. Uh, the detect color, which is well, the color that it looks for, and in a white light scenario, we look for mm, white. Um, threshold color, which is the variance or the tolerance that it has. You can play around with those RGB values until your pins start showing up um, in, a, in such a way. So actually, if we do the, if we hit T to adjust threshold, see it says uh, enter the threshold color. So if we hit the T and then drag these sliders, you'll see that more whites show up all the way until we bump the threshold all the way up and it just whites out the entire screen. So we can use this to adjust what the camera sees. And if we start going down, you'll start seeing your pins fade. So we want the threshold to be somewhere in here. And keep in mind that a little bit of white haze at the bottom of the pins probably won't matter that much because we're really scanning the heads of the pins. So um, that's how that works. And uh, the pixel color non-detect, leave it as it is. That blacks everything out basically. Um, you will never really need to change that value, but we did leave it in there just for flexibility and general awesomeness. So um, if I hit B on the keyboard, it's going to switch the color profile because the camera has two color detection uh, pretty much profiles is, is kind of what we're calling it. Um, it looks for white light RGB pairs for each of these values, and it looks for black light RGB pairs depending on what mode the score is currently in so whenever it switches to the player that wants the black light and the black light on the deck is lit it has to look for a purplish hue and actually if i hit b you'll see that the lights went off on the pin deck automatically and everything changed on the screen and i don't know if the camera will capture this very well but the the colors on the screen are actually a purplish hue of the pins even and that's the color that it's looking for Okay, and if you adjust, if you hit the, the, D co uh, the D key on there, it will tweak the detect color. So you could tweak that until your pins show up nice and bright under a black light. Uh, very simple to do. And at the end of every, um, of every tweak, just hit enter and it will save your changes. So there you go, changes save. So we will go back out here. Just hit backspace and we can... Let's see, we can go out and we will exit the menu. Okay, so bowl is, is now back on there and everything continues all hunky-dory and your changes take effect immediately. Um, one thing I want to do actually is I will just restart the score just to put it into a uh, kind of a known state. So one thing that we do have right there is, is restart score and you'll get the nice splash imagery and beautiful stuff and it will go back to your blank screen. That's to use if, um, not necessarily to create a new game, but if you want to kind of wipe all the player data and start from a, screen, uh, a clean slate without either having to reinitialize the program or whatnot. So I'm going to detach you. I'm going to try to prevent the shakiness as much as possible, which failed. And take a look at the hardware interface here. So computer is, is nothing glamorous, just... Uh, bare-bones, old compact system, running XP, uh, all that jazz. But back here is kind of where the magic happens um, on the Webster's Dictionary. And um, this is an Arduino. Right now this is the Arduino Uno, but the Arduino Mega is what's going to be used in our final product. Um, programming language is the same. We just get more I.O. ports and a little bit more memory and, and uh, capability there. But uh, this Arduino is actually hooked to the computer through USB. And the USB cable is uh, what's responsible for carrying the signals from our scoring program to this, as well as delivering power. So this delivers the 5 volts we need in order to operate. Uh, and this supplies 5 volts to the logic circuits that are in the pin deck, as well as the, uh, the, the deck light um, control box here, which is 
nothing more than a glorified gang box. So um, at the at the front of the deck, we have the the two light uh, light fixtures um, and the camera right up there. And we have two lines going through, and right here we have two plugs with a universal 120 volt AC line going in. Uh, these other uh, these other wires here, one is for power, so that's five volts to power the relay on the inside. Uh, the other one is a control line. This is what turns on and off to activate that relay, and the other one is ground. So everything here is, is has a shared ground. Now. Uh, this relay is, is wired by default to always have the white light on. So in the event that even if uh, this Arduino loses power, the deck light will actually stay on. Um, there, I'm going to have to design a power distribution panel that comes in here that will have a separate data control line for overall deck power and even the deck light. But right now the control line just switches either white or black light. Uh, kind of proving a concept, but there will be a power distribution panel um, designed and, and implemented here so we can control the universal power lines to the deck itself as well as the uh, controlling the other 120 volt appliances such as the deck light. The other, uh, the other lines will pretty much be your, your typical 12, 3.3, and 5 lines. So, and that'll all be DC, but this is just for AC switched, uh, high voltage AC. So, um, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, this this um, entire prototype deck or and lane fixture here will be repurposed. Um, you know, uh, as you can see, I didn't uh, allow for any pit space or anything like that. It just kind of goes into the floor. So this um, this lane section right here will likely be put into use as a um, as just a traditional lane section and the. Uh, I will build another lane section that will house the machinery and, and all of this stuff going on top here. So uh, that will be um, put into another section and put in uh, with, with pit space in mind. So uh, then we'll start on the uh, machinery and the sweep. But uh, right now as it stands, the software is uh, pretty much done. Got a, I have to finish up score correction and... Uh, fix a couple little glitches and we should be ready to just go ahead and post that so you guys can start using it and uh, I'll try to come up with a how-to you may see another video but uh, this is probably the last major update that I'll make on the current thread I'll probably start some new ones um, since this thread was marked introduction I'll probably open up one for the various aspects like the rake and sweep or whatever that way it'll make it a little bit easier for people to pick out what they need and and things like that. There's not really a lot of activity going on in the small scale forum anyway, so I don't think uh, Boltec is strapped for the space. So we'll see. But um, all in all, very good progress. And please keep the questions, comments, concerns, hate mail, whatever you want uh, coming. Um, it's all good stuff. So I'm very happy to to have the help that I have um, with the community and, and the support and everything like that. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know, um, and I will happily answer that. I've been trying to keep on top of it. So, oh, yes, and, and always have a fire extinguisher whenever you're, you're testing this stuff, especially if you're getting involved with mixed high and low voltage ACDC stuff. So, all right, guys, thank you very much, and more to come.